Well, today is day one of my two hour a day build challenge. And it's just a challenge to myself to get out here for two hours every morning and really get to work on these little things that need completed that have just been nagging me forever. It's actually not day one, it's a little bit of a lie because I came in to the hangar last night and started. And what I did last night was I made the two center or top covers for the, uh, the access covers for the holes in the glare shield. If you remember from a previous video, I had already made one, but it was too thick of a material to kind of bend around the, uh, the glare shield. So I, I had a, a sheet of thinner aluminum that I used. Uh, so yesterday I cut out this one and this one here, the two top covers. And then this morning I made the two side covers. So now one little task that's been bugging me forever that I knew I had to come out here and do is done. All four access covers now are done. Now for these clips here, I'll just do a voiceover because I didn't record any audio. And I recorded this last night. So this is the upper center access cover here that I'm working on. And I didn't have a PVC pipe or something to bend this around. The only thing I had that was round was my fire extinguisher. And so I'm just using that to put a slight curve to this access cover panel. And I'll put it on the airplane to test fit it. It's not gonna be an exact curve to the panel, but as long as it's pretty close, once the screws are in, it won't really have any tension on it and it will fit nice. I'm looking here and I know I needed a little bit more, so I went back to the fire extinguisher. And if you notice, I have it on here crooked this time. And I did that on purpose because I'm mostly trying to get a little bit more curve to this bottom corner. Now when I put it back on, watch where my right hand is there. See how it's sticking up a little bit there? That's what I'm trying to get to uh, curve a little bit more. So I took it back to the fire extinguisher a couple more times just to get a, a much nicer curve so it more closely fits the glare shield. Now this is where I started this morning. I'm making the two smaller ones, and I have this manila folder that I cut. And I thought the easiest way for this would be to put it behind there and just trace the opening. That will give me the size, well, it'll give me the size of the opening. And then you'll see in a minute here, I'll draw a, a lines around it to make the size of the panel. So I have my ruler, and I'm just adding about a half an inch all around it, because obviously you need to have the access cover larger than the hole. So there it is, that's what my cover will look like. And I went around the corner, so I just grabbed a washer here to trace the corners. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. There it is, there's my template for the access cover. Now, of course, I'll cut this out. And as you can imagine, the next step will be to trace this onto the aluminum. And you can see that thin aluminum I have on the workbench there. I don't know where I got this panel, but I was lucky to have it. I didn't have to buy an extra panel of aluminum, but it's nice and thin and works perfect for these covers. Here, I'm just kind of test fitting it and seeing how it's gonna fit on the glare shield. All right, so obviously I am tracing it onto the aluminum and I'll cut it out first with the shears. Now when I cut these out with the shears, I don't cut it on the line. I cut it a little bit big because the shears don't get a perfect, you know, a real nice cut. It kind of kinks the aluminum just a tad. So I cut it a little bit big and then I cut all along the lines with the bandsaw. what the panel looks like when it's done. And the straighter you can cut those lines, the least amount of filing you have to do. So I'm just filing all the edges and the corners. And when it's done, clean it up with sandpaper. My panel is ready. I've drilled three holes on the top and three on the bottom. And I haven't drilled any on the front or back because I don't think I'm going to need those. But now the tricky part is, when I put this on here, I wanna take my pen and trace the, the holes 
you can see the holes in there onto here so I know where to drill the holes. But how do I know where it's positioned on here? Because uh, once I cover the hole, you, you can't see anything. So I don't want to position too low like this to where it's, you know, if I exaggerate it, obviously, if it's down here too low, then this one's too low or, you know, it, you don't really know where it's at on here. So the way I figure that out is I take my ruler and I'm just going to draw some lines on here. They don't have to be exact, but well, you want them pretty close, just as long as they're parallel to these edges. And this is why you do this before you paint it. <laughs> That's exactly why I don't have this painted yet. All right, now I have some guidelines on there. And let me zoom in a little bit on the camera. So now what I'll do is when I position this, oh, I might have to make my lines longer because this actually covers them. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it doesn't, I can do it. So what I want to do is I want to position this to where I can see those lines right around the edge. And that, that, that's how I know where this is positioned. So this one here might be a little bit off, but I can use the other three as a nice guide. And if it doesn't work out, it's okay. You just get some MEK, erase the holes, and do it again. So let's see how close I am here. I'm gonna hold this on here. I'm gonna trace my hole there, there, here, and then uh, without moving it, I'll get these ones. All right, now let's see how close I was. So here it is here. These ones look like they're a tad higher than these ones. So I might actually take that panel and lower it just a hair. All right, this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference this top line. And before I had it right on the line, so now I'm gonna lower it from this line just a hair. And I think that'll make it perfect. All right, let's try this again. I mean, if you wanted to really spend the time and get it right the first time, you could actually measure all these lines, but I don't find any point in doing that. It would take longer to do that than it would to do this. So there you go, that looks about perfect. I'll leave them right there, drill the holes, put her on. All right, now I'm gonna to try to stand behind the camera and show you this. You can see I have a, a sort of a curve and a twist to this panel. And that's because it's, there's kind of a curve and a twist to that hole. And when I put this on here, you can see it fits just about perfectly on there. Once, once these screws are on there, you can just see how nice and easy that is to conform to the, the odd kind of curve and twist of the, the glare shield. So that'll work perfect. And what that does is when I have, let's say I have three holes on the top and three on the bottom, and I don't see any point in putting one, a, a screw on the front or the back because that just, these are enough to hold it down to the glare shield perfectly. So less screws, less weight, less work. And here it is. You can see how nice it fits on there. It looks perfect. Now I do the whole procedure over again for the other side. All of the four access covers are now complete. It's nice to have those done. One more step done towards completion. Now I'm thinking of ways to secure these panels. There's really three options that I can use. I can put nut plates on the glare shield with screws through here. I can use just little sheet metal screws to hold these on, or I can use very soft rivets. 
Now I have a bunch of different sizes of these black rivets. They're anodized black or there's some sort of black coating on them. And they're just soft aluminum. So these are certainly not rivets you wanna to use to build your airframe. Uh, I get these on Amazon, uh, but I, they're perfect for things like holding on fairings and stuff like that that's non-structural. So I could use these little rivets to hold those panels on also. Now, if I choose to use nut plates on here, I'm going to have to buy a bunch of nut plates, rivet them on. It's kind of a lot of work and it adds a little bit of weight. If I use sheet metal screws, that's probably the easiest because I could just screw them in. But the thing I don't like about that is if I'm ever reaching up behind a panel, I'm gonna scratch the heck out of my hand by having those sharp uh, sheet metal screws there. If I use those little rivets, they're a little bit harder to get out if I need to take a panel out. But what I figure is these panels are probably, hopefully, never going to come off. <clears throat> Remember I said on a previous video, there's a windshield that comes down and covers these panels. So they're, they're not accessible anyway with that windshield removed. The only reason I have these panels in here is for future maintenance. If I wanna add new avionics to the panel or I burn out a wire or something and have to re get into the electrical in there. It just makes access easier. Now, of course, I'll have to take off the windshield to get access, but my point is if I rivet these on, those rivets are probably never going to come out anyway. But if I ever actually have to remove these panels, it's a lot of work anyway because I have to take the windshield off and then I just have to drill out some rivets. Those rivets do drill out very easily because they're just soft, cheap aluminum. Uh, but what I like about the rivets is it's just so quick. I don't have to put in nut plates or do anything like that. So I think what I'll probably do is use the rivets in here.